Welcome back to the council time for Clark County Council, Washington. It is Wednesday, March 29. Uh, we have completed uh, a, an extensive work session on the 179th Street Access Management and Circulation Plan. And so now we turn to uh, the council time agenda, which has at the tail end uh, three executive sessions. First, are there any uh, amendments to the council time agenda? Okay, hearing none, it stands as written. So we begin as always with public comment. And I uh, a caution the uh, everyone taking uh, public comment and giving it at this point that the uh, comment is to be on the agenda items for council time only. Now, recognizing fully well that some people from the public may be really wanting to address the work session that just completed, let me mention that the next time for uh, receiving public comment on that content would be next Tuesday at the council meeting during open public comment. So again, the session right now is on the agenda items only for uh, council time. Staff, do you see any individuals who wish to testify? Chair, we have one individual online. Caller, please uh, state your name and go ahead with your comments. Yes, good morning. This is Kimberly Goheen Elbun, live citizen of Clark County, Washington, USA. Um, I'm really sorry I missed this morning's um, public comment. However, would the, the council please uh, tell me uh, real quickly what these three are about since online it doesn't really, it just gives a name and a number uh, real quickly and then I'll make a comment. Thank you. I've, I've read some about but just refresh my mind. Thank you. And then I'll speak. Um, Kathleen, did you understand the question? I don't. Um, so this is time to just comment on the agenda for council time this morning. So I'm okay, not the, sure. The, the three, the three legislation things that you're going to go be doing. What are those exactly about? So They're if you're referring to, online. if you're referring to executive session, it's at the bottom of the agenda staff. If you want to scroll up and it just talks, it just cites the RCW. One is for pending litigation and two are for potential litigation. Okay, and those are what I can speak on and I'd like to know what the litigation is about. Because it's not Sorry. it's not transparent online. No, those are revealed in executive session, not in the, the public domain. That's the reason that they're in executive session. Um, so if there's anything otherwise that you wish to comment on the agenda. No, I'm I'm looking right I'm looking right now, so let me look. Um Got to get on my phone here and all right. So I will comment on the uh, minutes of March 22nd. Uh, that particular meeting was a board of the health health meeting. It was canceled. I'd like uh, an answer now to why it was canceled so the public can understand why uh, it's very important. For instance, Vancouver canceled uh, a regular meeting and they didn't tell the public why. Well, they were in Japan. So uh, that caused quite a stir, even in the council. Uh, so the public does want to know uh, why the health, uh, the board of health, was canceled, and uh, why not an immediate. Um, I think I heard uh, Melnick say something about uh, he wasn't prepared. So, but it, it should be listed on there in plain English, you know, as to what's uh, why a meeting was canceled. It's kind of important for us that. Uh, kind of plan to speak. Um, so that's on those minutes. Also, um, naturally, <laughs> I didn't scroll down, but you know, I want to just say that we need to wake up the citizens to make sure that the public is very important to you people because, frankly, we we are your boss. And so let's get that straight. Have a great week, and uh, God is always good, and let's make God, uh, America godly again. Thank you. Thank you. And is there anyone else, uh, staff? There, that is it. Okay. Old business. Minutes for March 22, 
Is there a motion? Motion to approve. Second. Second. Um, any discussion, changes, edits? Hearing none, they stand approved as drafted. New business, the proclamation for National Volunteer Week. Kathleen Otto? So, yes, um, FVRL, so Fort Vancouver Regional Library, reached out to us to propose a proclamation for National Volunteer Week. Um, if approved, it would be on the 4th of April and presented that evening. I believe this is an annual one that we have received in the past. So if there's any suggested edits um, or seeking your direction on moving forward with that. Uh, Madam Chair, just speaking generally, I mean, I haven't seen this one. It is a, an annual one, but I'm hoping we see it and it's approved in a timely manner uh, with uh, hopefully little angst and public outcry. Uh, so I'm just concerned about seeing it, having it go through the process where we all can approve it uh, in time uh, for when they would like to have it read. I had seen that linked online um, and it is before us uh, right now. Um, anything else you, that we could add uh, other than you can see it linked before we vote? Okay, this I'm is sorry, exactly it's the first time I'm seeing it. I guess I missed the link earlier. It looks pretty lengthy. Is it gonna fit? I mean, how is it for format and Length, is everyone okay with it? I, I've read it. I'm okay with it, Councillor Medivaji. I, I looked at it a few days ago, so it looks good to me. Other councillors? Yes. It looks good to me. Thank you. We'll put this on the agenda for next week. And then uh, 3.2, the associate development organizations. <clears throat> Yes, so this is the request that comes every two years from Department of Commerce. Um, it's requesting designation of an associate development organization or ADU. Um, we do not have an economic development person in house, nor is there other organizations within the community. So for the last few years, we have actually stated CREDC um, to maintain that ADU designation. So this is just a, um, for me, it's a formality. It's an RCW that's required for Commerce to reach out for the counties to get this designation, and then we have to turn in that designation to them, I believe, by April 15th. Um, would there be time for a brief update on uh, the CREDC with the um, contributions that they have brought to Clark County that would justify? a favorable vote yet again, which I certainly am inclined to give. I don't know if there's updates for today um, from a counselor who's on their board or commission. We can certainly bring it back next week. Um, it is required by RCW that we do this, so, um, but I appreciate that you would like to have additional information before. And Chair? With you, yes, go ahead, counselor. Yeah, I would be supportive of this. This was a new uh, thing uh, that I just read about this morning. Um, but I, I, I would be interested in just having a briefing from CREDC uh, and maybe uh, their thoughts in looking forward to the comp plan update. Uh, just might be good to have a conversation. And I would always be interested in that as well as far as, and their emphasis on recruitment for the county, their emphasis on recruitment along our railroad uh, and other focus areas. I feel confident that uh, Jennifer Baker or one of her uh, group there would be happy to present uh, that discussion uh, with us and for us, uh, hopefully next week so that we could uh, take action on it right away. Okay, we will reach out to her to see if she's available. Um, I don't know if she's impacted, but I do know that next week is Washington spring break, but we will 
reach out to her and actually we might have another week that we can bring it back on the 15th. I'll have to look at the calendar. Thank you. Chair? Yes, just, just to clarify, to clarify for me, it, it, one isn't dependent on the on the other and I'd be happy moving this forward when appropriate. Councilor reports. So just for my clarification, do we have the majority that want to have the report from CRABC prior yes. to designating them on the ADO? Okay, I see one, two. So I'm not quite sure who we would designate aside from CREDC. So I don't see how our conversation will change the outcome of this, but I'm, I'm okay either way we wanna proceed. I am not suggesting that there would be change, but accountability. And that's important, I think, when uh, making a designation of this, of this magnitude for DOC. Um, and uh, CREDC is, uh, I think, very well equipped to uh, make uh, whatever commitment uh, they can with us. So um, that's what I, I was seeking. So, Councilor Young, are you supportive? I would say if there's a couple of counselors that would prefer to wait, I'm okay with that. Okay, thank you. We'll reach out to her. Councilor reports. We had quite a few people attending, counselors attending uh, meetings that were required in terms of uh, their official liaison capacity. So um, if we could hear about those, that would be great. Chair, I, I have uh, something just to share. Uh, I had the opportunity to meet with some local farmers, extension service and the undersecretary for rural development of the Department of Ag, uh, U.S. Department of Ag, Torres Small and the uh, uh, Representative Glusenkamp Perez. So that'll be occurring next week. And uh, it'll all, the topic will be value added. So uh, making the most of our farmers' productivity. Anything on the Northern County Emergency Services? Um, yeah, I would, I guess, well, they're making progress on the ARPA funding that they received in building their new facility. I drove by that and it, uh, the walls are going up. It looks very good. Uh, I think things are, are going well with them. Uh, they have a, uh, new director, um, and I'm recently blanking on his name, uh, but uh, who, and I met with him for uh, uh, in advance of the meeting to just go over their plan. So they're they're all all's well with the folks up there. You were a busy counselor this week. Uh, work for Southwest Washington. I I don't really have anything specific the, to share. Uh, uh, I'm not, I don't, I don't have anything specific to share, but I did attend the meeting and, uh, uh, things are going well. I think it's, I, I think it's good to intersect with them, uh, because, uh, they have resources that, you know, can help with, uh, uh, developing, uh, programs for, uh, especially with youth, uh, enabling them to, uh, connect with either education or jobs so that there's, there's a, a number, a large number that are, uh, uh, at risk because they haven't really, uh, they aren't in school or they aren't working. So they're, they're that's the focus of what they're working on right now. Thank you. Other counselor reports. Chair. Yes, go ahead. Councilor Young. So this week I attended IMPAC and the CREDC board meeting and as well as executive meeting. And um, as far as CD, CREDC, one of the things that we spoke about was uh, some of the things were about value added and the things that they produce and how they help our community grow and develop. Um, and I probably won't say a whole lot more about that, especially since 
we are intending to ask them to come and make a presentation to us. So I'll leave it at that. And impact, I did not bring my notes with me, and I apologize for that. Generally speaking, in this meeting, there is not a whole lot, if anything, that impacts Clark County. Um, I make sure to write things down if there are, and I don't have those notes with me. I don't think there were anything discussed that affected Clark County. And the last thing I would like to say, um, special thanks to Eric Harrison and our Parks Department. Yesterday I was able to go on a tour of Camp Bonneville, and it was an eye-opening experience. It's an amazing asset that we have as a county, and I look forward to the process in the future of, of defining how we're going to use that space and the public input that's going to go into that conversation. And I just appreciate his time that he was able to spend with me to give me a little bit of a history about it so I can better understand it. And that's it for today. Thank you. Other councilor reports? Uh, good morning, Chair. Uh, I was at the CTRAN meeting last night um, and sat in between the mayor of Battleground and uh, counselor, a counselor from Ridgefield that I actually met a few months ago. Um, it was a lively conversation with them approving their new HR program. They're, they're going to work day, just like the city and the county. Um, the mayor of Battleground had a lot of questions about that um, related to transit. Um, and it was explained to him several different ways that it's an HR system. It doesn't it doesn't directly relate to transit per se. It's for finance and HR tracking purposes. Uh, they also talked about the 99th Street um, transit um, and the different impacts of the new construction and how long it would take approximately to get from the downtown waterfront area to the WSU um, college. And um, there were some concerns about the length of time because it would take approximately 40 minutes with all the stops from the waterfront all, all the way along up to WSU. So there were a lot of concerns about that. And also related to the 99th Street exit, Getting off that area is, I guess, pretty dangerous. Um, I take that exit all the time, actually, to go home. So I am familiar with um, some of the different transit difficulties around there. But um, they are just trucking along on a lot of different improvements. And it was mentioned that the transit app that C-Tran uses is excellent. If you're interested in using C-Tran, that sounds pretty great. It gets you to where you need to go pretty quickly. So that's it for me. Good summary. And Sean Donahue, who is the uh, uh, chair of the um, uh, the CTRAN board here lo uh, locally, was just elected national president of the of the uh, coalition, the bus coalition. And I thought it was interesting that he follows uh, his father's footsteps in that in that role. So there's a family tradition going on. Other counselor reports. Okay, well, hearing guess, none. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I, Is thought, that I may be the only one left, so I thought I'd make a couple of quick comments. And I see Mark Asways uh, in the audience here. We we had our first meeting, uh, setting up primarily the process and timeline for the our next round of ARPA nonprofit uh, grants. Uh, so I think. We're pretty firm on the dates. We, I wish I had it to actually post up here, but I'll leave it to uh, the publication for those uh, dates because we want to keep that in the public's mind to make sure that no one gets missed uh, this round that wants to submit. Chair, I have I have those dates. Uh, it will oh, the grant application opening will be April twenty first. Uh, and uh, the closing uh, grants will be due by May 19th, and that will be posted on the website on April 21st. And as to Councillor uh, Young's comment, if, if every councillor here hasn't been out to Camp Bonneville, you really need to go and get a full tour uh, to look at that precious piece of property that's languishing right now. Um, I had a meeting yesterday, a tour, uh, with the mayor of Vancouver in um, 
a new stand-up well, it's been in process for years. It's a center for addiction and uh, triage. Uh, it is a great program that they're building uh, in Portland. It's been ongoing. They're they're operating now to some extent, but it's something. It's a model for us. Uh, so I'm hoping one to meet with Vanessa and Michael and perhaps their new. Uh, I'm assuming they've hired that new. FTE that's focusing on mental health uh, to kind of take a look at what the county, our county is doing because we have all the bits and pieces in place, um, but none of them really coalescing and being coordinated of uh, the way this uh, Center for Addiction and Triage is working uh, in Portland. And to that, um, I'm hoping to have a presentation by them or a representative at probably Law and Justice because it takes um, basically every stakeholder to join uh, in the effort. Um, I think that was all I wanted to mention today. Okay. Thank you, sir. How about work session requests? I show none. That is correct. Uh, policy issues. Um, Obviously, you've heard about the 179th and we're still monitoring the budget impacts or potential impacts and hopefully we'll have some communication from our lobbyists today or tomorrow as the next round of budgets are going to be released. Uh, we are working on the heritage farm conservation features parks on how they work together and then potentially another um, one for ag. So that will be coming before council shortly. Um, I don't know, and I'll have to look to Amber on when the next meeting is on the homeless encampment policy. As soon as that meeting occurs, I will be putting it on the next council time for an update. Amber, do you have a time? Yes, on that? it's actually this afternoon, so it'll be perfect timing. Okay. Thank you. And, I think that's, and that's all that I have for right now. Thank you. Thanks so much. So we will. Um, uh, adjourn or not adjourn, but we will move into executive session where we have uh, three executive sessions planned. Uh, one on pending litigation, 30 minutes, RCW 4230-110, item 1I, and then two on potential litigation, both at 10 minutes, RCW 4230-110, number 1I. And that brings us to 50 minutes. So it is 1120. Shall we come back into uh, council time uh, for the purpose of adjournment at 1220? Is and, there and any I just after want to action? confirm we're not able to meet in person, correct? We're going to have to. Yes. So, yes. So, for counselors who are in the room, uh, you'll go in and log on in your computer in your office and join remotely. Uh, Leslie, there is no after action uh, projected, is there? That is correct, Chair Barman. There's no okay. after action. So, we will see you back in uh, this uh, particular uh, portal at um, 1220. No, 1230. I apologize. Takes a little bit of time to get in and out of those portals. It's, it's 1220. 1220 will be coming back. Okay, I had just said 1230. Uh, so let's uh, make a choice there. Leslie, you yes, choose. The, the, the initial time that you um, stated was 1220. Well, all that should stand for sure then. Okay, see you at 1220. <laughs> bye bye. Hello, Chair Bowerman has asked to announce that executive session will be extended for an additional 25 minutes and open session will reconvene at 1245. Thank you. So, Chair Bowerman has asked to announce that the executive session be extended for an additional five minutes and our open session will reconvene at 12.50. Thank you.
Good afternoon. It is Wednesday, March 29, 2023. We are, as a Clark County Council, returning to uh, council time for the primary purpose of adjournment. Uh, we have completed of the executive, executive sessions that uh, we were scheduled for. We have completed two of the three with one to be continued to next week. The only reason being time. Uh, it uh, was possible to uh, put it to next week, and we wish to do that given the fact that it is 1250 at this point. So with that, we um, have the quorum for which we wish to uh, say simply, council time is now adjourned.